Less than 24 hours after the CDC gave full approval for vaccines for young children, kids in San Diego are already rolling up their sleeves for a shot. Thanks for joining us for the nightly check in. I'm Catherine Garcia. Brady Children's opened a clinic for young patients Wednesday morning. The hospital has a thousand child doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Our NBC7 crew met six year old Finn and eight year old Olin, a couple of the first kids in line. But I got kind of scared when um, I um, was, when I got, when um, I was about to get it. I was just going to be my bravest when I got it. <laughs> well, their mom tells us they have severely immunocompromised family members, so this will allow them to spend time together again. Next Wednesday, the National School District in the South Bay will begin offering vaccines for students 5 to 11. They have 8,000 doses. It's welcome news for this parent. We have uh, the protections that are available in place, such as face masks at school within their desks. They have the plexiglass uh, and then, of course, social distancing. But I feel so much more comfortable knowing that they will be vaccinated. Other parents have told us they will be waiting a bit longer to see how children respond to the vaccine before signing their own up. The district tells us shots will be offered on select days, one school at a time. Parents are encouraged to check with their child's provider to see if they can get an appointment that way. If you'd like to go to Rady's, you can go to the trending bar at NBC7.com to find a link to book appointments. Or if you're already a Rady Children's Hospital patient, you can use the MyChart app. CVS and Walgreens will also start giving COVID shots to kids and if you look on their websites, you'll see appointments already offered. Walgreens will have doses ready starting on Saturday. CVS starts its vaccinations Sunday for this age group. Parental or legal guardian consent, of course, is required and children have to be accompanied by an adult to get their shot. Meantime, the County Board of Supervisors continues to take public comment about the county's coronavirus response, and we've seen these meetings get heated in the past. But at Tuesday night session this week, some people took it to another level. Lemurs, I like to call you Lawson Reamer. You're a little monkey. I'd like to see you hang from a tree. And then Wooten, you're f***ing Aunt Jemima. And uh, yeah, syrup won't sweeten and cause your diabetic sorry, coma fast I'm enough sorry. either. You are not allowed to say that to her. You are not oh, allowed well, to say that to her. I can't say that you're a fat you piece call... of sh You are not oh, allowed well, to I can't say that say... to her. No. Absolutely not. Not under my f***ing watch. No. Absolutely not. That man is Jason Robo. He calls himself a rebel comic. His comments included body shaming and racist comments, as you heard, toward county leaders. That was Supervisor Nora Vargas uh, that you heard from as well, saying Robo has body shamed her before, but that his racist comment toward Dr. Wooten went too far. She said she had to speak up to correct something that should not be happening in 2021. Robo tells NBC7 he does not think he owes anyone an apology. On Monday, the U.S. will lift border restrictions for fully vaccinated travelers. While that's welcome news, a lot of people also are dreading the expected longer wait times at the ports of entry. Right now, the times hover at around an hour to an hour and a half wait. The Department of Homeland Security says it will be placing more officers at those entry points. Still, they're asking everyone to be patient. They also say people can speed up their travel by using the CBP-1 mobile app to fill out documents ahead of time. There are new allegations from the attorneys for the armorer on the Alec Baldwin movie Rust. They are investigating whether the bullet that killed the cinematographer could have been intentionally placed in the revolver handed to Baldwin. The case is now focusing on two people who handled the revolver before that happened, assistant director Dave Halls and armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed. Some other crew have claimed poor working conditions and mistreatment on set, and now investigators are looking at the possibility that the bullet could have been intentionally placed in the gun. The attorneys for the armorer also claim firearms were left unattended on the set, that ammunition was left unsupervised in a prop truck. NBC News has not verified those allegations and authorities have also not responded to those allegations. Tacos, burgers and barbecue will all be food options at SDSU's new stadium in Mission Valley. The university announced its concession vendors this morning, which include the Crack Shack, Ho Dads and Cali Barbecue. The statement is set, the stadium is set to host its first home game on September 3rd of next year. SDSU says the construction project is still on schedule and on budget. Well, before we sign off, here's a look at your current temperatures. Dagmar has an extended forecast in the weather section on the main menu of our Roku and Apple TV app. That'll do it for our nightly check-in. Have a good night.